Hi guys, welcome back. Massive win for England, 57-15. A record score, but what can we read into it? Well, there's quite a few things we can read into it, but also we need to be careful. I've done a whole video on, you know, not reading too much into warm-up games. So what mitigating circumstances are there for Ireland? Well, a few. They're further behind in their World Cup training cycle, um, and it showed. However, if you look at the interviews with um, Schmidt and with Best, they didn't think they were that far behind uh, and they were pretty shaken actually so i think you can read a bit more into it than maybe what i was going to because this was a lot worse than what ireland thought they would be however we see scotland come back from a big loss wales didn't play well at twickenham they came back so absolutely doable although they had 11 starters and you say well they were playing for the first time but so are a lot of England starters um, so yeah pretty disappointing but at Twickenham few mitigating circumstances not as bad as it could be however next up Wales times two, that is tough. Two massive games against Wales. Um, they could obviously come bouncing back if they lose both of those. It's just a real hard, you know, motivational not going into the World Cup. So Irish fans, you tell me where you think that sits. Um, and also questioning maybe if they knew they were gonna be this far behind in their preparation, why plan to play England, who are going to be further ahead at Twickenham? Just seems a little bit of a strange one there. I mentioned, you know, maybe money comes into why all the nations organise the warm-ups they do. So let's look at some big pictures with Ireland. So first of all, well, I was trying to see if they were going to try something new attacking-wise, and it was very hard to see uh, because they couldn't really get much go forward after the beginning 15-20 minutes. They were throwing in a few offloads early on. I thought, oh, maybe they're going to try and expand their game. And maybe that was the plan, but they couldn't really ever get a foothold in the game. Uh, they did break through a few times, but generally England's defence looked pretty comfortable. They were putting in those big hits they wanted to put in, um, and Ireland weren't getting any go forward. And, you know, until you get a basic, you know, attacking shape, how can you expand? Uh, they were probably looking to get some good launch points off their scrum and line out. Scrum was okay, um, line out was awful. So, again, how do you start working on an attacking plan when it's like that? So, Wanted to see that, couldn't really see it, you know. Klein and Henderson as a pair probably didn't do themselves any favours. Henderson probably looked the best individually. Best had a pretty poor throwing day as well. And, you know, especially because England only had two main line-out jumpers, which I was worried about in Cruz and Atoje. You know, they really made a mess of that line-out. Yeah, like I said, the scrum was okay, but not dominant. Um, and at times in their carries, they did get smashed backwards. Um, and, you know, that was one of Ireland's USPs getting over the game line relentlessly, retaining the ball. Um, so that didn't happen. So Ireland need to have a, a good look at that. England physically looked very impressive once again and significantly more interplay in the forwards. Deliberately so. And they look quite comfortable with it. So that is good. You know, like a Sinclair. They really combines carrying with offloading well. Obviously, Billy can do it really well. But other people, like, you know, Curry Underhill showing they can do it as well. So that is good. Set piece was very solid. Like I said, the Irish line out was so bad. Don't read too much into that. And I'm still a little bit dubious of the only taking two line out options, um, which is why maybe actually. Wilson might come back into it as a slightly better line-out option. The ford farrell combination in attack obviously worked in that game, but we know it works when they get lots of good go-forward ball and they got loads. Uh, I still think starting with a Slade at 13 um, is a better call with Tulangi at 12. You know, a lot of those plays they could still do by moving Slade into 12 and Manu out to 13, which is perfectly feasible. Um, and then maybe moving to Ford Farrell if you know, things are going really well or indeed they need to change it. So you know, a good tactical option, but I don't think you know just because of that game, that's what they go with. It has its you know, shortages. They lose a little bit of running game, a little bit of physicality. 
Anyway, so next up England have Italy, which is a nice way to uh, round off really. They'll probably mix it up again. Um, you know, try and even out the game time. Surely Farrell's going to start at 10 and hopefully finish with a nice win to give them quite a good uh, motivation going into the World Cup, a good little warm-up set there. Ireland certainly a tense time. Now I want to look at the tries actually, which kind of tells us a little bit about how this game has gone. Now Ireland's first try was quite nice actually. They worked it well, got England on the back foot a little bit. Uh, Tuolangi was a little slow to drift out. They got on the outside edge. Fokker Nasiga knows Mitchell wants him to press up if he can, but they weren't quite ready. They got on the outside, not a clean break, but they got on the outside, commit daily, put the chip in behind, which Stockdale does well, get a good bounce, but you know, they created that opportunity. So, you know, that is the way or a way to get at England. They do defend narrow because they want their press to be so good. But of course, if they're going backwards a bit, harder to do. So teams will note that for sure. And it's been that way for a while. Um, Cork and Seeger's first try. Ford and Farrell showed their handling really nicely. And Tuolangi carried the ball a lot. And then when he was a decoy, you just can't take your eyes off him. You can't half commit to this guy. And that helped um, hold the inside of, uh, defense uh, for uh, Daly, I believe, coming into the line and then putting uh, Thorkin and Seeger in. So you know, that's a really good way of using Tuolangi plus Ford Farrell. It was, it was quite a you know, really good copybook try there. Um, and then we had a few um, tries like dailies, like um, cruises, where and actually curries, where they just got loads and loads of quick, fast phases going forwards all the time. Island defence uh, retreating, and you know eventually they break through with curries. Um, some nice interplay again with those forwards, so that was good to see. Um, a toe jays was well, not fortunate because he picked a good line, but islands. Inside defence was caught ball watching a lot, not numbering up properly, not communicating. That was a shocker. They had plenty of players there and they just, just didn't spot him coming in. So that's something Ireland can fix, but you know it's something that an elite international player should be doing all the time, numbering up, communicating, talking. So um, I think Schmidt was really unhappy with that sort of thing. Andy Farrell certainly will be. So I think they did get a bit of a rollicking because... Ireland's defence was really poor and the communication was really poor and they missed like 30 plus tackles so it was a shocking defensive day for them. Um, Aki's try was really nice, good one-on-one -on -one, uh, or individual brilliance, one-on-one -on, -one on Daly, burns them on the outside, Daly isn't the best one-on-one, -on -one. we know that, Mike Brown is a lot better one-on-one -on -one, but Daly putting great kicking, great passing, great running so you know, you take the weakness. And then finally, uh, Thorkin Seagull's second try is a standard move where you have a flat runner, then the blind wing coming round the back, but they did it one out, um, which is probably, you know, a, f a term most amateur players would be very familiar with. But when you have Farrell at 12, you can do that under pressure. One out, under pressure, gets the ball away, try. They could still do that with Slade, like I said, but it's a little bit easier with Farrell there to Alangi holding the outside as well. So some really good tries there, kind of highlighting some of the strengths and weaknesses in the two teams. So let's just have a talk about some of the players. I thought Marla had a really strong game again. I mentioned when we were picking World Cup squads, um, I really wanted him in the team. Some saying we don't need him, but this is exactly why we need him. Mako isn't right. Um, his hamstring was a horrible injury, you know, tearing off the bone. It's going to take ages to come back from it. He may not even be back for this World Cup. So Marla's absolutely essential. Uh, we'll see how Mako goes. If, if he's a no-go, then you probably bring in the extra tight head in Williams. Anyway, but we'll see how that goes. Um, Toji and Cruz proving they are the number one combo. Everyone pretty much thought that they were, and they had a stellar game. Actually, a Toji... That's what he can do. We know his physicality, breakdown work, charge down pressure, all that stuff. But often he gives away a lot of penalties. He was very clean. Um, and you know that just shows how good he can be. So big tick for him. Uh, the back row clearly worked. But again, against a team playing very poorly. You know, I, I do, don't think the balance is quite right. Although it clearly frees up Billy. Um, they're both very energetic. But... Wilson could be, you know, replacing Underhill potentially. 
and doing similar job plus more line out option. Uh, Young's was started off okay and then basically had a shocker. Uh, some of his passing was awful, his kicking was awful and that's so bad because that's what he's in for. He's in for his basics and his basics were poor. So he, surely he's going to play against Italy and he needs a big game, you know, and it starts to question where's the best um, uh, nine in the Premiership, which is Spencer, not in the squad. Um, luckily, Hines looked good again. That could be a bit of a bolter if he starts. For Ireland, Best had a bit of a shocker again. Line-out throwing was poor. He's 37. Is that a factor? Is that a mistake? But we'll see how he bounces back. Healy was looking good, actually, but picked up an ankle sprain. If you know about, um, let me know any inside track about Healy's ankles because they're crazy strapped the whole time, both of them. Does he have a, an existing weakness there? Possibly. Um, hopefully he comes back for them. The back row was completely outplayed, although around the pitch I thought Peter Romani was decent. But in the line-out he was given a torrid time. Van der Fleer was kind of just defending, tackling all day. And Stander was kind of just completely second fiddle to Billy and England's big ball carriers. So that was disappointing for their starting back row. Or is it? Does Conan come in? Um, Byrne and Carty couldn't be a worse <laughs> match to have their kind of audition to see if one of them goes. It's looking like one of them does go because Carberry's still dodgy. Sexton's got a little bit of a knock, although it looks like he's going to play. So let me know which of those look best, but probably neither at the moment. Aki and Ringrose, we know they can do better. Had a big off day, completely dominated by England's midfield, although Aki's try was very nice. And then Lama versus Thok and Asiga shows what if a little guy has loads of defending to do against someone like Thok and Asiga, it's going to be a shocking day for them potentially. Lama's so much better going forward, we know that. It wasn't a go forward day for Ireland. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the game. Huge win for England, but what can we read into it? Um, you guys let me know what comments on individual players. Um, also, you know, big bounce back for Scotland, got to be said there, uh, really dug in, shows that I've, you know, for Ireland that you can come back from a really bad loss. But to play Wales, who are starting to look hot, who have been rested for an extra week, I think it's at the Principality the first game as well, let me know if I'm wrong, that is seriously tough. Anyway, until next time, I will see you then.